Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist at the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first here we've got a couple of advisories out here on the hazardous weather graphic. Uh, flood advisories actually, uh, first one down here uh, is at uh, on Montana Creek at the Parks Highway. Uh, water's overbankful and there's some uh, flooding going on there. That's expected to continue at least through uh, 1.30 tomorrow afternoon, Saturday there, and that's due to snow melt. Up here on the uh, Colville River, there's a flood advisory out there also for snow melt going on. And uh, that's for the, uh, or that'll be out until 10 a.m. on Saturday tomorrow, at which time either they'll take another look at it and kick it out longer or let it cancel. So I'm moving on to the uh, fire, or for the breakup map here. Again, all the rivers, Brooks Range southward here, wide open. And now mostly open here, both on the Sag River and the Colville, down until you get to the unknown area there. And then, of course, out toward the Arctic coast, still ice. And showing the flood advisory zone there for the uh, Colville River at Colville, up in that area there that'll be out uh, at least through tomorrow morning. And moving on to fire danger, not too much. Uh, little near, actually an area up here that's a little narrower than what I've got drawn there in the Yukon Flats here by the Yukon and also up there around the Porcupine River area. And then here over the uh, Eastern Copper River Basin in the valley there, just uh, both these areas just barely reaching the high fire danger criteria there from uh, looking at the indexes on there. And uh, so really not too bad fire danger wise here as we roll into June. And for the satellite imagery, we've got uh, clouds here, mostly over there in the Yukon, but you can see they expand here over the eastern and central interior on up toward the eastern Arctic coast. Pretty good out here to the west from the uh, northwest valleys all the way down into Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. A few clouds around Kodiak Island and a uh, system here pushing into the southern southeast coast, kind of weakening as it goes north. But uh, showers here from, from this batch of clouds up over the Yukon, uh, Skagway, they picked up about six hundredths of an inch of precipitation uh, during the day today, and that was earlier today. Looks like those showers are uh, moving off now, but the uh, southern areas had more than that with the North Gulf Coast basically dry, and then thunderstorms breaking out here over the interior, eastern interior areas, with a uh, big storm out here to the west with storm warnings. You can see it uh, stands out quite vividly here, especially the back edge of the frontal boundary there, which is now past Shimia and the main low center, keeping it windy there as it pushes inland, or pushes eastward there. So the uh, strongest winds, uh, gusting over 60 miles an hour, storm warnings in advance of the front. Uh, not quite so windy, but still gusts in that uh, 35 to 50 mile an hour range out toward Shimia and Attu. And the rain just reaching ADAC and the winds gusting 40 to 45 miles an hour at mid-afternoon today. Those will probably continue to increase as the front approaches along with the uh, intensity of the rainfall. Otherwise, uh, St. Paul right on the edge of the Cirrus, Sealed, or the Cirrus Shield here. Uh, not too bad over the Unalaska, basically dry Alaska Peninsula areas and again over the western interior. Pick up some low clouds and fog uh, along portions of the Arctic coast all the way to the east there. And on the chart, got a narrow ridge of high pressure right across the Alaska Peninsula and up the west coast to the uh, Seward Peninsula here. No gradient, very light winds, so pretty well socked in down to zero visibility at Tin City uh, earlier today, earlier in the afternoon. And uh, one to two miles in, in some areas along the Arctic coast there, like Wainwright over to about Barrow and also around Kaktovik, but uh, basically dry. And then the afternoon heating here triggering these thunderstorms as uh, temperatures rise into the uh, upper 60s, try to approach 70 in some areas, not quite reaching it at 3 p.m. But uh, definitely thunderstorms breaking out here, bringing anywhere from a tenth to three tenths of an inch of precipitation, possibly more there under the uh, thunderstorms themselves. Isolated showers developing over the Kenai Peninsula and the Wrangell Mountains, as well as possibly for Kodiak Island. That's just a possibility there down on the southern end of the island. Basically, uh, pretty clear Cook Inlet today, sunshine, south central Alaska. Mad Nuska, Susitna Valley, rising into the lower 70s this afternoon with uh, mid afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, let's see, it was Big Lake up to 72 today. Otherwise, contrasting that with Baron Wainwright, stuck at 27. 
And here in the southeast coast, uh, again, Cloac uh, picking up about a quarter of an inch of rain, while Ketchikan had six tenths of an inch. Actually, Ketchikan, a net had a quarter of an inch, not Cloac, and Ketchikan had the six tenths of an inch precipitation, contrasting that, as I mentioned, with just six hundredths there up at Skagway. For tonight, uh, that uh, front weakens. This page is trough now. Uh, more showery conditions over the southern panel, just a risk of a shower up to the north there. Maybe some clearing, variably cloudy, light winds overall, interior Alaska, Kodiak Island, dry, uh, variable clouds possible, north Gulf Coast all the way up to the Brooks Range. North of the Brooks Range, though, lower flying conditions, IFR becomes, or marginal VFR becomes IFR here along the Arctic coast with maybe some scattered rain or snow shower activity on the east side. And for the Bering Sea, this front progressing eastward, strong storm out there, nine, about 965 millibars on the center. Strong westerlies continue here. Uh, again, gusts uh, 35 to 50 miles an hour now with this gradient from the western Aleutians in toward Ad Adak, with the uh, winds actually starting to subside here in advance of the front, may fall below storm force now, just gales with this uh, frontal boundary now by uh, after midnight probably, but rain wind edging in toward the eastern Aleutians and the Pervilofs. Not too bad along the coast there, winds starting to pick up out of the south, say Cape Newenham up to Cape Romanzoff and of course Macoriak. Otherwise, uh, light winds here, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, the Kodiak. And for tomorrow afternoon, again, thunderstorms triggered in the afternoon with uh, afternoon heating, possibly down into the Talkeetnas, maybe Chugach Mountains, up along the Alaska Range, up into the north central interior. Dry, mostly sunny, mild back to the west, highs uh, in the 60s here with chance of showers for Kodiak in the afternoon. Same thing for the Copper River Basin to the Wrangell Mountains. And still a chance of rain here over the southern southeast coast, uh, more showery back up to the north. And then the outlook for Sunday, partly mostly sunny here across southern Alaska. Maybe a risk of an afternoon shower over the Kenai Peninsula. Looks like the thunderstorm threat gets kind of pushed back to the north from the Alaska Range into the uh, eastern and interior. And now the uh, Notak Valley northwest there has a chance of afternoon thunderstorms, as well as uh, they're just north of uh, Skagway. Otherwise, still unsettled over the southern panhandle. New storm pushing into the far western Aleutians as this front dissipates along the southwest coast. Lows for tonight, uh, mid to upper 20s on the Arctic coast with mid 40s over the central interior. Tad warmer, the upper Yukon Valley, lower 40s Bristol Bay, all the way out across the Aleutians. Mid to upper 40s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, lower 70s, 65 to 75, call it here. Tana, mid Tana Valley, upper Yukon, lower 70s down to McGrath and Nikolai, and probably in the Susitna and Manuska Valleys once again. Otherwise, mid 50s, mid to upper 50s, the Panhandle, 40s for the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Highs or lows tomorrow night here, mid to upper 40s, mostly in the upper 40s, looks like from the uh, upper Yukon River Valley to the mid valley here, or the lower end of the uh, Yukon River Valley, and then lower 40s to near 40 out along the southwest coast. 40s, southern Alaska, Kodiak, mid 40s, lower to mid 40s here for the Panhandle, and low 40s for the Aleutians, and those rise to the mid 40s for the afternoon on Sunday. And 70 to 76, safe here over the central eastern interior, north of the Alaska Range, back in the lower 70s, Sitna Valley, and possibly the Manuska Valley as well. Highs stuck in the upper 50s. Some areas might crack 60 here over the southern southeast coast on Sunday afternoon with the uh, Kodiak Island area, mid 50s there, maybe uh, southeast flow. Could be some low clouds and fog go along with that, but nothing too extensive. Lower 40s or upper 40s to lower 50s for the Alaska Peninsula. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Big area IFR here, out over the Bering Sea, uh, right up to the southwest coast here, through the Bering Strait and across the Arctic coast, and a good portion of the North Slope, south of the Brooks Range, all the way down Kodiak Island, North Gulf Coast, good VFR tomorrow. Marshall VFR here, uh, Eastern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, uh, up toward uh, the extreme eastern Alaska Range. IFR here, uh, over toward the border and central Panhandle, a little more widespread as you head south. In the afternoon, marginal VFR Dixon entrance all the way up uh, to the northern panhandle, proving up here in the afternoon, a little bit back to the west. VFR holds here, Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, all the way northward, hits a marginal VFR, eastern north slope and the Beaufort Sea coast. And IFR now uh, in a band with that uh, incoming system there, 
right along Nunavak Island, western St. Lawrence Island, down to uh, just east, pushing east. Uh, be this, this band will be a uh, little bit, uh, as I mentioned, farther back to the west there. Of course, it'll be a lot more widespread in the morning. So for the following morning on Sunday, central eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, north slope, back to the IFR, south of the Brooks Range, VFR again, but increasing marginal VFR here, Prince William Sound, uh, to about uh, Portage, say, or the Chugach Range, turning an arm marginal eastward across the southeast uh, part of the Copper River Basin Zone. IFR, northern Panhandle, now marginal VFR the way down to Dixon Entrance. IFR along and south of the Alaska Peninsula and areas of back out to the west. <clears throat> For the afternoon on Sunday, uh, developing thunderstorms here, but they'll be of the VFR variety. So the uh, lower flying conditions will be up along the, mostly the central uh, Arctic coast there, Lick Talk back toward uh, Point Barrow. VFR south here. IFR uh, pushing northward, but not quite making it to the Kenai Peninsula area. Possibly Cape Yakutaga or Cordova. Kodiak, marginal. Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, marginal VFR. Some areas of uh, IFR out here over the Bering Sea, but not where the Pribilofs are, and a spot there on the southern coast of the Nunavak Island area, but uh, no, it's VFR now for the, much of the panhandle in the afternoon. And for Anatovic, VFR, and Attigan as well, VFR tomorrow. Nice day for Lake Clark, Merrill, and Rainey. All will be VFR, with uh, risk of a thunderstorm there for Rainey in the afternoon, as well as uh, Windy. And also Isabel, VFR, but a risk of a thunderstorm in the afternoon. But uh, uh, Mentasta, Mar uh, VFR, a little bit better chance of seeing some thunderstorm activity over here and this along through this pass there. But again, uh, VFR showers. And for Tanita, VFR as well, risk of a thunderstorm in the afternoon to early evening. Portage, VFR. Chilkoot and Whites are out marginal, improving, uh, hopefully becoming VFR at some point in the afternoon. And for the freezing levels here, really not much of a thermal gradient, at least uh, on this chart. 6,000 feet interior here, down to about the panhandle, maybe a little bit chillier down to the south there, but uh, not, uh, not down to 4,000 feet. Anyway, back out here to the west, 8,000 feet, eastern Aleutians all the way up across the uh, northern Bering Sea there to the Russian coast. And some cooler air behind the system as it pushes eastward there uh, into the western Aleutians. Now continue to advance east or east northeast into the afternoon. And for icing, again, this band of moisture progressing uh, east northeastward. So a zone of uh, Considerable moderate rime icing above about 5,000 feet will be exiting the central Aleutians early tomorrow, pushing in across the Fox Islands during the day and approaching Falls Pass by the late afternoon. Otherwise, uh, light to isolate moderate rime icing here back across the Pribla, starting to push into the southwest coast in the afternoon, but not quite making it. And over the southern panhandle, central and southern panhandle there, uh, areas of mixed icing possible there of the uh, light to isolated moderate uh, variety. Jet stream. Upper level low here, southwest of uh, the Queen Charlotte's there, so that's pushing the, the uh, jet stream here well to the south. We've got the uh, split here, 150 knots splitting right here, this branch off to the southeast. This one wrapping around the low that's progressing eastward here at 80 knots, and again, that whole pattern gradually shifting eastward will be into the southwest coast tomorrow night. And for 9,000 feet, we've got uh, strong winds here. 40, uh, 55 to 65 knots over the Aleutians, increasing here along the southwest coast. Pretty light and variable here over the interior to the Arctic coast. 3,000 feet, uh, 45 to 60 knot winds along the Aleutians. And with that will be moderate chop there from the Alaska Peninsula in the afternoon along the southwest coast to St. Lawrence Island. We have cleaned over 1,500 miles of shoreline now. Basically, it comes down to just human muscle. I mean, we use chainsaws and knives. 
buying stuff from like Russia and China and Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia. It really doesn't matter where it comes from. Like, we all just have to clean it up. Our goal right now in the next 10 or 11 days before the end of this year is just to see how much we, we can collect before we get to remove it. What you see on the beach is a fraction of what's out there. You can pretty much break it down into three or four things. Uh, water bottles, a lot of water bottles, styrofoam, fishing nets, fishing buoys. And that's 99% of what you find on the beach. Basically just go along with chainsaws and muscle and uh, get the garbage, put it in sacks, and then from there, we haul it up above the log jam so it's out of any heavy surf or winter storms if it's gonna stay there for the year, and uh, put it in super sacks. So yeah, we just progressively work down the coast, just day in and day out. We have uh, like daily goals for ourselves that like if we're working at a pretty good rate, we'd like to keep on pace with about like, I don't know, about 20, 20 to 25 super sacks a day. So this is pile 102, and in this pile right now, we have two super sacks and one set of buoys. June 23rd here, this is what we've done today. Uh, we're up to 25 super sacks on the day, and I think for now we'll call it and just keep cleaning until tomorrow. My name is Hannah, and I represent a uh, organization in Japan called Japan Environmental Action Network. With over what 20 people working together to clean up the beach this is amazing like we all need to work together to you know clean up the beach as much as possible so like every single time i go back to japan you know i go i, I talk to the fishermen and the fishermen's like it's a joke but they're like if you find any buoy with my logo you gotta bring it back and you know like always looking out for that stuff The crew's awesome. I mean, we're all skiers or snowboarders, and we're all friends. I mean, we're all good friends. My dad started it. He's the man behind the desk. He makes the ball roll, for sure. He works hard. He, uh, he doesn't give up easy, which is good. This stuff is uplifted quite a ways during an earthquake. I think my bag's about full already. Yeah. I'm gonna get the quick look back in here. Somebody else is back here. The thing about marine debris is it's kind of a hidden problem. Unless you're out there, especially on these remote beaches that are so heavily impacted, people don't see it. I remember probably a good 20 years ago, I, I was out on the outside of Montague Island and flew out there. And I was just utterly astounded by all the garbage out there. You walk out there and you wade through this stuff and you go, this isn't right. This shouldn't happen. I think a lot of it's just awareness. I mean, I've been boating out here for a long time and I wasn't even aware of how extensive the marine debris problem is out here. But uh, it's, a, it's a consumer world out there for sure. I mean, I don't know where people's values are, I guess, but mine is you got to kind of have a little bit of respect for the environment and uh, considering we live in it, especially in Alaska. I mean, a lot of people like the outdoors and like to be part of the outdoors. That's why they live here, and it's uh, they don't necessarily want to see it trashed.
And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, this uh, arm right through here, that's going to tend to drift north and slowly melt here. Over the next several days, uh, all this ice here, whatever's left on the uh, Seward Peninsula in toward Kotzebue Sound, that's all uh, melting pretty good now. And then the main uh, ice edge up in through here may drift northward at about uh, a distance of 10 miles over the next five days. So moving on to the uh, coastal water forecast, south to southeast, 20 knots, seas 6 to 7 feet in the south coast. Southeast 20 to 25 on the north coast, 7 foot seas. Light southerlies there for Lynn Canal and Stevens Passage, and even lighter southeast breeze there for Clarence Strait. On Sunday, that swings around to the northwest at 10. Seas still pretty slight at 2 feet through all of the inside waters here. Stevens Passage and uh, Lynn Canal, where winds will be in the afternoon south to southwest in direction. East northeast 15 on the south coast, north 15 knots on the north coast with seas 4 to 5 feet. And for Prince William Sound, east winds of 15 tomorrow with three foot sea. Southeast 20 here for the eastern North Gulf Coast, but southwest 15 for the western zone. And uh, southeast at 10, pretty light winds for the Barren Islands. Northwest 15 for Kamishak Bay, Cook Inlet, north at 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Southwest 15, north of the Forelands. Southern Cook Inlet, up to 20 knots, seas five feet. Southwest 20, Kamishak Bay. Westerly, or I'm sorry, easterlies at 20 knots for the Barren Islands with four foot seas. Now we get into the west winds here along the Arctic coast that go southwest as you head east there toward Middleton Island. Prince William Sound, light northwesterlies with seas at two feet. And for tomorrow, Kodiak Island, Shellacoff Strait, southwest 15, three to four foot seas. Southwest of Sitkanak, west 15, but a big increase in the winds coming in, increasing 30 knots from the south and southeast here across the Alaska Peninsula with eight foot seas, Bristol Bay, southwest at 10. And then 15 knots southeasterlies here, southwest of Kodiak, on up across Bristol Bay. Light winds now for the Alaska Peninsula out of the southeast, and 10 to 15 knots south southeasterlies for Kodiak Island into Shelikoff Strait. Western Aleutians, good gales hold through tomorrow. The you know, it's intense low pulling northward, westerlies to southwest, 45 knots, 35 to 40 knot sustained winds in the central Aleutians. And then that uh, head of the front here, Minimum gales now as that front starts a week and pushing eastward 35 to 40 knots across the Fox Islands. I'll look for Sunday, 15 to 20 knot winds from the south-southwest here for the eastern Aleutians, 25 southwest central Aleutians, a little bit stronger, but not still under gale force out here for the western Aleutians at 30 knots. And for the southwest coast to St. Lawrence Island, all southeast, 30 knots tomorrow, seas uh, 7 to 10 feet. 40 knots southeast winds here for St. Matthew Island and minimum gales there for the Pervilofs, 35 knots with seas, 14 feet, but up to 18 feet around St. Matthew Island. And then for Sunday, southeast 30 for St. Lawrence Island with small craft advisories down to Nunavak Island as well as the northern Bering Sea there around St. Matthew Island. Lighter winds from the south at 20 knots for the Pervilofs and uh, the area south of Nunavak Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, variable winds at 5, virtually no wind there tomorrow. East at 10, pick up the 15 on the west side, Cape Beaufort to the straight, south 20. And then the outlook for Sunday, those uh, east 15 knots here from the western coast, roughly about, uh, say, Point Lay, and then 20 knots from Cape Thompson to the Bering Strait, and 15 knot easterlies now for the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. For tonight, maybe a few isolated showers up in that area, but nothing significant. Otherwise, uh, more of a factor will be the low clouds and fog and IFR they produce there for the Arctic coast into the North Slope, through the Strait here. Wind and rain on the increase, pushing eastward with uh, pretty good winds. Could still be storm force westerlies out there tonight uh, for the Western Aleutians. And then uh, increasing wind and rain slowly for the Eastern Aleutians. The Pervilof showers on the decrease for the Panhandle, but hold through tomorrow. And actually maybe a little more rain as another band rotates up into the Southern Panhandle. Thunderstorms once again developing, triggered in the afternoon, possibly as far south as the uh, Talkeetna's, Chugach Range maybe, more specifically the Alaska Range up to the uh, Koyukuk Valley. Front weakening as it pushes eastward here, and you can see on Sunday that really just breaks apart and dissipates here right along the southwest coast. Split flow, this area pushing off to the southeast, that area back to the northwest. Not much left here, just a narrow band of diminishing rain. Pretty dry over the interior areas. Afternoon thunderstorms again, Alaska Range, eastern interior, and back to the northwest there, as well as the northern panhandle around Skagway, otherwise showers to the south. And the next storm here, 
wind and rain back into the Western Bering Sea. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>